and welcome to FPL Mate, your best made for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and it's time for my Game Week 36 team selection video where I'm going to be showing you my Game Week 35 scores as well as my transfers and captaincy for this Game Week. If you do enjoy this one, please do drop a like, really helps out the channel. Can we shoot for 1,500 likes on this video and subscribe if you're new around here as well. Let's have a look at my Game Week 35 scores. Alright guys, so I know a lot of people had fairly low scores this week, but hopefully this one is going to make you feel just a little bit better about whatever points you ended up landing on in game week 35, because I only scored 31. Yes, not a particularly impressive score for me. I know it was a low scoring game week in general, but that is a kind of a good thing. If you're going to have a low game week score on any game week, you want it to be in a week where everyone else is scoring pretty low as well, so the swings aren't too significant. And yes, I did get a red arrow here, 13, 14,000 places dropped uh, over game week 35 which obviously I'm not happy about that but it could have been a lot worse and I'm kind of glad in a way that uh, I'm, I'm still somehow in the uh, the uh, top 100k we still will be pushing to see how high we can get but 100k is I think a respectable rank regardless uh, considering my start at least uh, McAllister saved the day of course but there was loads of disappointments everywhere else it's Stupinian with zero points Edison losing his clean sheet right at the last minute Erling Haaland having so many chances to score but nothing really coming off and Manchester United absolutely failing with a random, really poor uh, bit of goalkeeping from De Gea, which wiped out the sure clean sheets and the clean sheet points on Fernandes and Rashford. So things could have gone so much differently, but they didn't. And uh, yeah, it, it turned out to be a, a pretty L game week in general. Be interested to know some of you guys' scores. Is there anyone out there who scored less than 31? I don't imagine there's many of you, but if you if you did, then that is seriously impressive. And I want to know about it. But hey, uh, it, it's not the end of the world let's try and move on to next game week we are at least very well set up for the following game weeks uh, aside from maybe uh, one injury which we'll talk about very shortly so for game week 36, I've got one free transfer, 3.2 million in the bank. So a decent uh, kind of transfer kitty there to try and move forward in and uh, make some moves. But let's start off in goal. We have got Edison at the moment. And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, my benching dilemmas are not good this week. They really are not this good. It's, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare one. But I think I'm going to stick with Edison um, against Everton. I don't think Edison has been in terrible form necessarily recently. He's just conceding random goals. And yes, that could happen again. But I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with the Edison situation. I feel like I just have to play him. At least he's nailed on. I mean, that's a good thing compared to some of the other Man City defenders. If, if Edison loses clean sheet, they all do. So it's not like he's worse than anyone else really at the moment. But yeah, I, I think we're going to stick with Edison for this game week. But I may make a last minute change. I have got Kepa on the bench against Nottingham Forest. So I do think it's better for save points. But do I trust the Chelsea defence at the moment? Not massively really. So this is a position which could p potentially change. I'm not 100 percent set on this at all so we'll see how it goes right now Edison is going to be my uh, starting goalkeeper into defense I am going to start with Trent Alexander-Arnold and that's mostly because his attacking output has just been so so brilliant recently I do think there's a chance that Leicester score against Liverpool of course and Liverpool are always kind of leaky in defense this season but at the same time Trent has been putting up attacking numbers can kind of comparable to a lot of the attacking players recently a lot of the midfielders and forwards Trent is kind of putting up some decent numbers and if I had like a I don't know a Martinelli or something someone like that playing against Leicester then I would probably play Martinelli against Leicester, for example. And Trent is kind of putting out a similar amount of XGA as the kind of Arsenal midfielders and some of the Brighton midfielders as well. So in a way, I'm picking Trent as an attacker. And really, that makes sense because right now, guys, clean sheets are an absolute myth. They, they just don't happen. And if they do happen, they happen so randomly that it's impossible to predict them. So in many ways, you've got to pick your defenders based on who is the most attacking. And Trent definitely fits that category. We've got Kieran Trippier up next. Uh, he plays against Leeds and Brighton. I think Trippier is potentially an outside kind of captaincy choice. I, I know it's kind of a bit controversial. He hasn't scored too many FPL points recently, but he's been unlucky not to get some assists, I think, in recent game weeks. And also, this Leeds game, I think, is definitely an opportunity for a clean sheet. Leeds are going to be a little bit more defensive than they have been previously, and they still don't really have any finishes in their team. And that Brighton game in the second leg, Brighton are already looking exhausted at the moment. And I it just kind of looks like Brighton could be beaten at any moment. We saw that against Everton. And Trippier is going to have that attacking threat. And 
I don't know. Newcastle maybe need to play a little bit safer in these last few games. Just trying to nick one or two nils rather than going for the bombastic scores. I don't know exactly what's going to happen there. It's a bit of a mystery, but I think it could go either way. Newcastle can continue their amazing goal scoring, but I also do think there is a chance that they could be a little bit more sensible, a little bit more pragmatic in the way they play as they try and solidify and secure this top four position, which is not guaranteed anymore with Liverpool looming and lurking around those positions as well. We have got Botman as well, who I do think is still a decent decent shout. I know a lot of people are looking to switch out Botman, but again, Botman are like comparable to actually Fabian Scher in terms of his attacking output recently. He's got a decent amount of ex uh, expected goals recently, kind of 0.8 something around that over the last five game weeks. So you never know when he's going to pop up. He's taken a, a decent amount of shots from those set pieces. So you never know. Trippier whipping it in for a corner, Botman on the end of it. That would be an absolute dream, wouldn't it? But it's definitely something that is possible. You would have to be pretty lucky for that to come off. But you play your own cards. You, you kind of roll and try and build your own luck, make your own luck in this world and in this game of FPL and in a double game week, you have got twice the amount of chance of that lucky break coming for you. And certainly when clean sheets are so random, we don't know where they're going to come off. These double game weeks definitely help us kind of get the best odds possible on a random clean sheet or a random headed goal or a random set piece goal. And Trippier and Botman are all about that, really. That's the kind of their main kind of attacking output, I guess. So, yeah, I like this. I actually do kind of like this. And I, I definitely would be looking to start all Newcastle players that you have right now. I think you could make, potentially make a move. Botman, switch him out to another team's defender and then maybe play with two uh, forwards from Newcastle. And it's definitely kind of an option for a lot of people. but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd do that for a hit. And that's the problem here. And I think Botman is not bad enough that I would be desperate to remove him or anything like that. I mean, at least he's nailed on, which is, you know, something that can't be said about every Newcastle player, I guess. Uh, we've got Fernandez in midfield. And I know Manchester United have been struggling recently. But Wolves are a team very much on the beach and a, a team that are so bad away from home. Wolves are like, it's so bizarre. They are terrible when they play away from home and actually pretty decent when they play at home. In this game, they play away from home and Manchester United are the home team and Manchester United have a hell of a lot to play for again Liverpool looming got to solidify that top four position Fernandez has been one of their best players recently I know people are going to say well he hasn't scored that many FPL points well he has got a few FPL returns recently but when you watch Fernandez play on the pitch every single game he always looks like there's a serious chance of FPL returns and that's what we're looking for when we're looking and to try and predict future FPL points we want to see good performances we want to see near chances we want to see in a way players being a little bit unlucky because it kind of suggests that in the future, you know, that bad luck is not going to go on forever. You know, things do tend to balance themselves out over a longer period of time. And that's what we're starting to see with Fernandes already with his goal and assist that we saw the other week. So, yeah, definitely still think Fernandes is a good pick. I do think these fixtures over the next three are really, really nice for a nailed-on player like Fernandes. And you never know when you're going to get a penalty as well. So, that could be pretty nice. Pretty tasty points there. We've got Marcus Rashford as well, who does need to regain his uh, goal-scoring form. I'd like to see him as striker again, to be fair, but I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen there but certainly against Wolves again it's, it's an opportunity where we just saw Wolves get absolutely destroyed by Brighton just a week ago so could that happen again I definitely think that is more than possible. And if so, Manchester United are going to be in prime position to score a lot of goals in that game. Like, if Wolves collapse or continue to collapse away from home, it's going to be Fernandes. It's going to be Rashford getting huge, huge scores. So, I'm actually quite happy to go into this game week with this pair. Next up is a little bit controversial, and that's Martinelli. And I'm actually going to start him. And I know not too many people uh, kind of even own an Arsenal midfielder anymore. But, fortunately, I still do. Martinelli and Erdegaard seem to be the two midfield picks for Arsenal at the moment. But, Martinelli, I'm quite... Quite looking forward to seeing if he can get in behind a leggy Brighton team and Brighton are running a little bit out of steam at the moment and this is going to be an opportunity for Martinelli to kind of play on the counter-attack a little bit for Arsenal there. I do think Arsenal will be able to score goals against uh, Brighton particularly with what we've seen recently from them and if so uh, Martinelli is going to be involved. He's still one of the primary attacking threats at Arsenal, if not the uh, attacking threat at Arsenal. Maybe you add in Jesus there. Erdegaard is al always a threat, but he is a bit of an overperformer recently. Is it sustainable with Erdegaard? I don't know. I don't know. But with Martinelli, at least the numbers are backing up his good performances. So, yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for uh, Martinelli, who is perhaps a little bit differential in the kind of higher ranks. Let's see what he could do. But I think it could be pretty interesting. We've got McAllister next. So he's been a bit of a hero of this team recently. 
recently where certain other Brighton players have perhaps failed. But still, McAllister continues to bail me out of all situations. I know he's been a little bit unlucky with his attacking returns recently. But if you look at the uh, outside of those specific goals that he scored, he's actually been playing really well. He's actually been taking a lot of chances. He's actually been fairly advanced. And even when he's playing deeper, he's still making marauding runs forward. He's still kind of getting forward, particularly when Brighton are behind in games. He's been really, really attacking and actually one of the primary attacking threats for Brighton, even when starting games off in the defensive midfield position. So he could play an attacking midfield. We have got a few options there. Obviously, we've got Gilmore and Caicedo who could play in the central defensive midfield positions, allowing McAllister to move forward. Maybe the uh, injury to Solly March means and CISO maybe moves out wide as well. So we are going to have a few different options for McAllister moving forward uh, for him to be a little bit more attacking and kind of continue to get those uh, attacking returns, but maybe make good off some of the bad luck he's had recently. For example, Pickford, uh, you know, made a huge save from the McAllister shot last game. Uh, we also saw McAllister hit the post in that very same game. Very, very, very close. Uh, had a uh, you know a couple of chances created for his teammates as well. So, yeah, I, I still think Malis McAllister is a really, really good pick for this double game week. He should be re reasonably nailed on and is on those penalties as well. So, lots of positives to be taken from McAllister, particularly over the double double that we're going to see over the next two game weeks. And finally, in midfield, I've got Solly March, and right now it is not looking good. I'm still waiting to hear confirmation about the true extent to March's injury. But I have to say, guys, from what I've seen, it, it's looking like it could be a potential season ender at the very best it's going to be a couple of weeks which does rule him out of both of the double game weeks really at least this one so yeah I'm making a bit of an estimation at this point that March is going to be out for, for a few weeks but I think that's incredibly likely and I think there's a really good chance that it might be a season ender for him so he is going to be a player we would be looking to move on but I've put him on the pitch there just so we can talk about him for a little bit and uh, kind of discuss that he's not really an option for us anymore probably probably you know like I'm like 90 percent sure on this one but I, I guess we'll find out over the next 24 hours or so uh, up front guys we've got Erling Haaland against Everton uh, an underappreciated player this game week can I say by the way guys no one's talking about Erling Haaland everyone's kind of talking all about the double game week players but don't forget what an absolute machine this guy is is he even a potential captaincy option not many people are going to be captaining him I don't think which is, is quite quite bizarre we, we don't see this very often um, on my 100 experts video yesterday for example do go check that out by the way but yeah, in that video, we kind of saw that Erling Haaland is a super differential captain this week. So maybe something that I want to think about, to be honest. But I think a lot of people have concern that maybe he is going to be rested or rotated or, you know, substituted off early, maybe at half time, because uh, we have got this Everton game in between two massive Real Madrid games. The first one, obviously, uh, was not the result, I guess, that Man City would be hoping for. And they do need to finish the job in that second leg. So, yeah, Erling Haaland still, uh, uh, you know, there is justified concern about him potentially being rested, rotated, whatever. Up front as well, we have got Callum Wilson. Bought him in last game week and still pretty pleased with that decision. I know Isaac is probably the safer pick, but I love that Wilson is more explosive. So yeah, guys, I said earlier on Twitter, uh, do go follow me over there, by the way, um, that what you want from Wilson or from Isaac or which one you're going to go for really depends on what you want from your team. Wilson is not really a secure player long term. So he is a player you might be thinking about removing next game week or the week after because you don't know how many minutes he's going to get. Uh, but he is very explosive. And in a double game week where we think we're going to get 100, 110 minutes from Wilson, that is enough for a player like this to score goals. It really, really is. And uh, hopefully he is going to be that explosive player playing through the middle on penalties. Uh, you know, really, really high overperformance on his XG consistently throughout his pretty much his entire career in the Premier League. Uh, really, really good finisher and has that explosivity. Uh, but Isaac is a lot safer. You're going to get more minutes from him. Eh? So you're going to get your, your, uh, your, your kind of appearance points as absolute minimum. And with Isaac as well, he only really needs a goal or an assist and that he's suddenly on max bonus because he is a bonus points machine is Isaac. But Wilson still, I think, is the uh, the chaser's pick in many ways. So if you're a bit of a chaser like me, and you want to go for something a bit bombastic, then uh, Wilson is your guy. So yeah, I'm excited. He's, he's a, a, definitely a pick that excites me indeed. So uh, looking forward to that one. On to the bench, guys. And this is where the dilemmas begin. So we have got Kepa against Forrest. Again, I could switch that around. I could go for Kepa ahead of Edison and just pray for the same. 
save points more than anything. Chelsea really with nothing to play for though, which, which kind of does concern me just a little bit. We've got Pervis' Stupinian on the bench, which I know is also going to be controversial. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will be looking to play a Stupinian over the likes of maybe a, a Martinelli or maybe a Trent or, you know, if you don't want to transfer out March, maybe just play a Stupinian ahead of March. Um, I'm not convinced that uh, there's going to be any clean sheets in this double game week. We're talking about Brighton, a tired team, playing against two of the best attacks in the league. It's going to be really difficult. Both fixtures away. And I don't even know if Estupinian is guaranteed to play 90-90. I feel like there may need to be a rest for him at some point or another. Maybe this is not going to be the time. Maybe it is. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'm counting on that a little bit. Maybe I'm hoping that he gets rested in one of the games to kind of justify him being benched. And maybe I'm talking myself uh, into that decision, I guess. But... At the same time, I'm just not convinced by this defence. I am not convinced by these fixtures. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just... I worry. I worry a little bit about that. I feel like the Stupinian could be a two-pointer, despite the fact that he has a double game week. And I'd rather take uh, I'd rather take a Trent, who I know has really good attacking returns against a weak defence. I'd rather take, you know, Newcastle defenders who look a bit more defensively solid. And, uh, you know, they, I mean, Trippio's got, you know, arguably just as much attacking threat as, as a Stupinian. Botman maybe is a little bit more controversial, but I'll leave that guy that one to you. Uh, we've got Watkins on the bench here, just not been scoring goals recently. His uh, numbers have dropped off a little bit as well over the past three or four game weeks and this Spurs team off the back of a clean sheet last game I don't know I still think Watkins is a good pick and I would be happy to play him but I don't who do I bench for him it's really difficult and again Luke Shaw on a normal game week I would be looking to play Luke Shaw but again I'm, I'm not going to do that because there's just so many better options Luke Shaw of course playing at centre back at the moment uh, Manchester United looking a little bit troubled at times recently as well I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't want to write any of these players off, absolutely. But I just don't see how they fit in my team. So, yeah, I would be really interested to know, guys, would there be anything you change out of my 15 players that you see on screen right now, with the exception of March, who we're going to make a transfer for in a minute. But, uh, yeah... Let's just uh, make the transfer and then I'll let you guys decide uh, what you would do with my team. Because I think I like what I've got right now, but I'm not confident in that. But I don't think there's any way to be confident. But anyway, I said I'm going to make a transfer. Let's make a transfer. Usually we would say uh, these are my options kind of thing. But I think this week it is so, so obvious what I need to do. And that is Soli March out and Kaoru Mitoma in. It, it's so, so simple. It hurts. It, it, this is the most slam dunk easy transfer I'll make all season. So I'm just going to do it. It's just too obvious to not do it. So uh, yeah, let's get that pretty much locked in. Like I, I'm reasonably certain this is going to be my transfer move for the week. Uh, Soli, uh, Soli March is obviously injured. And Kaoru Mitoma is a player who I've not owned at all this season. But in recent game weeks, ironically, when he's been blanking, every game I've been watching of Brighton, I've been watching uh, Mitoma and kind of thinking, this guy is uh, this guy is dangerous. Uh, he has been so unlucky not to get FPL returns recently. I know he got an assist in the, his last game, but yeah, even before that, he's been really unlucky not to get more out of his games. And I'm so kind of risky with my team already. Like, I haven't got Mo Salah in my team. I have got Wilson instead of Isaac. There's already a couple of risky players here. A, a couple of differential kind of picks and directions that I've taken my team in. I would rather just make other aspects of my team a little bit safer because, yes, I want to push up my rank, but I don't want to be stupid. I don't want to throw away a top 100k. And every week I'm kind of worried about Salah and I'm worried about Mitomar because these are the two players that can destroy me every week. If I can get Mitomar into my team, at least I've halved that in a way. I think if you are already a Mitomar owner and you're moving March to McAllister, I think that's a slightly more difficult decision. But I think for me, this is really, really easy. So, yeah, let, let's uh, absolutely do that. Uh, and uh, I at least that's one less player to worry about. I'll still be worrying about Salah and Isaac. But you can't have them all. And if you want to go differential, you do have to go away from the template a little bit. You do have to make some moves that are not 100% template. And that's kind of exactly where I'm at at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be my team. Again, guys, what would you change? Would you change anything like this? Or do you think I've got it reasonably spot on? Have I got the bench players right? I'm, look, I know there's going to be points on my bench this week. I know it's a, it's a fact. It's going to be a points on my bench. But at least I'm trying to give myself the best chance here. I feel like these players do give me that best chance. Now, finally, we need to talk about captaincy. And I am going to put the captain's armband on Callum Wilson this game week. I feel like he's got the highest upside of any player during this double game week. And if we get some early team news and we know Wilson is starting, that's going to be a huge bonus. But even if he's not... 
I arguably feel like that Brighton game, a super knackered Brighton team, maybe that could be an even better fixture for Wilson. And we do see Wilson pretty much get playing every single midweek game when he's available, even if he's not playing in both games. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with Wilson and Isaac, where the minutes are going to be. But what I do know is that Wilson, he doesn't even need that many minutes to get insane FPL scores. And we've seen that consistently recently. So Wilson, the captain, we're going to put Erling Haaland as the vice captain. Although if I find out Wilson is benched in that first game, I think that might just worry me so much that I actually do move the captain's armband to Erling Haaland as a bit of a differential. Uh, but again, that's risky in itself, isn't it? Uh, it this is going to be a, a super interesting, weird game week. We're going to need a little bit of luck on our side. Everyone is... Um, Let's see what happens. It, it could, really could go any direction it can. And it's so difficult to cover every different kind of possibility that might happen. And I think particularly in game weeks like this, where captaincy decision is so split. Some people going for Wilson, some Isaac, some Erling Haaland, some Salah, some McAllister or Mitoma. Uh, you know, people are going all over the place. So who knows what's going to happen? Hopefully luck will be on our side. Fingers crossed. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. We have got the Japan jersey, of course, uh, for Kaoru Mitoma. So uh, hopefully some of you guys noticed that uh, during the video. That's why I'm wearing the Japan jersey. But uh, yeah, if you did enjoy this one, please do drop a like. 1,500 likes would be amazing. Do subscribe if you're new around here as well. And uh, we'll have one more video tomorrow on Friday. But do go and make sure you check out some of the other content for Game Week 36 that I already uploaded. But there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.